that is funny because they put it on BBC One and still no one's watching. <laughs> hey! <laughs> hey, you guys! <laughs> That How was, are you doing? Mm, mm, that was that was mm, biting. Good work. That good was work. current. That was biting. now and hit. <laughs> it's and so fresh. now it's yesterday. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Big Damn. <laughs> My name is uh, Big Damn. <laughs> My name is Big Damn. <laughs> and, and listen, listen to this sound. That's me touching Matt. That's uh, oh, stop oh, touching oh, me. Stop. 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 Oh no! 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 Oh! God! Oh! oh, 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 oh <sighs> oh God! That's well, not... I'm glad I came uh, because <laughs> we are back in the same room, back in the saddle, baby. Oh dear um, me! And 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 oh, reunited, oh. and it feels so much like January. <laughs> it feels so January because you're in the middle of some time off, and you're knackered. Yeah, because I'm so busy, and I've finally landed in some time off. And I'm knackered. Yeah. And uh, I think collectively this week, we're just going to record the sound of our minds sort of deteriorating. Uh, but in between that, we Isn't might... Isn't that what this podcast was to start with? Fair play. That's always Fair what play. it's been. <laughs> well, this week we're going to document it in 3D. And if you light the candle that you can buy, <laughs> you can get it in 4D. What? Have you not seen that? What the hell? It's not like a 4D version of Rent, is it? No, no. If you light your candle at the exact moment... Capcom... (laughs) Mimi wants you to light the candle. Capcom are releasing a Resident Evil 7 VR 4D candle. What? Which is like a scent candle that you light while you're playing Resident Evil 7 in VR to get a 4D experience. So basically a candle? Yeah. They're giving out a fucking candle? Yeah. They're not giving it out, you have to buy it. Which you won't physically see... So you may knock over and set fire to your house. No, but you'll be able to smell it. <clears throat> the fire? Yeah. <laughs> and the candle. <clears throat> I got a tax rebate a couple of weeks ago, and I nearly, out of sheer... It was my first ever tax rebate I've ever received in my life. Cause oh, man, they're a glorious the, thing, tax the, the curse of being freelance is, you know, get tax rebates. I love a tax rebate, me. But I did a staff job a year ago. I, I, I got one, and it was it was quite chunky, because I was emergency taxed like a beast. Um, it was a girthy I, tax rebate. It was girthy. It was, yeah. it was thicker. I like that. And then a Gibbons pelt. And I nearly went out and bought a PSVR. Why? Exactly. I think it was just, <laughs> I think it was just impulse. I instead made the Why? clever decision of buying a second-hand PS Vita. Yeah, which a better decision. Which has served me so well, no, especially because I suddenly thing. realised, oh my god, I can play Counter Spy any time I like. Yeah. This is excellent. Yeah. Um, I also ported Crash Team Racing on there, which is still, to this day, my favourite video game of all time. Yeah. And now I have it in my goddamn pocket, mother It's lovers. pretty good. It's pretty good. Also, you can play your PS4 from upstairs. I know, the remote play. The remote play's uh, real good. And for the PS3 as well. It's got uh, a PS3 setting. Only on certain games. Ah. Uh, which is about see. three of them. Oh, shit. Because... Uh, That's it, I'm training in for a PS4. So, so <laughs> in P- on PS4, <clears throat> someone made it a requirement that all games had to support remote play. But in on the PS3, even though it was a system level thing... No one ever turned it on. Mm-hmm. Whereas the PS4 it's on by default for yeah. developers. So, um, well, the PS3 is the more uh, the sort of the more connected hub that you can use for the Vita, isn't it? Like in terms of plugging it into charge, and you can plug it into charge and also <clears throat> copy your stuff over to the hard drive. But it takes up so much space on the hard drive and takes well, almost luckily, as long to have copy a... over USB than it does to just download it again. Yeah. Well, luckily yeah, I have a I have a um, I think it's a thirty gigabyte, thirty two gigabyte. Memory card in, in the Vita? What? Yeah, I spent a bit of cash. Fucking hell. I've only got a 16 gigabyte one. I might be 16. I remember saying, 16. what have you got? And they were like 16, 32. And I was like, oh, whichever 32s one... 32s are expensive. Whichever one what hurt me. It cost me like 25 quid, the memory card. That's a 16. That's 16. There's no way you got... If you've got a 32 gigabyte memory card for your Vita for, what, 20 something quid, I'm going to scalp you and take it. Because those things when are like... When you say scalp me, do you mean in the business sense? No, I mean like physically scalp you and take your memory card. Well, I can see you're not holding a knife, but there is a cactus next to you. And I yeah. dread to think how you're going to achieve this. Slowly. <laughs> Erotically. <laughs> Slowly. Erotically. Well, speaking of putting things in holes, hey! uh, we've got some stories to stick in your head. Oh! It's been a bit of a quiet news week. It has been a quiet uh, news week. Here's the first story. I miss my and that was a terrible pun. 
<laughs> Rate us on iTunes. <laughs> terrible, terrible. Um, you remember the Constantine series that Matt Ryan was in? Nope. That, yes, I do. Yeah. <laughs> that it's, everyone liked, but no one watched. CW Network. It was NBC. NBC, yeah. but um, eventually became part of the CW universe. Yeah, because Matt Ryan popped up in season four of Arrow. Yep. Um, as Constantine. As John Constantine. <clears throat> He's also recently returned to the role for the Justice League Dark straight to DVD animated movie, which looks like a... Partnership? Yeah. It looks, yeah. Like, a, it looks like a modern day um, DC animated movie, which is to say not very good. Yeah. Um, and... Oh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, Justice League Dark, something that the fans definitely want to see. But just in case people don't want to see it, we're going to make Batman a main character as well. Yeah, because we can't do anything without Batman. Because Batman, yeah? Batman. Batman? 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 Twat man. Ha! Keep calm and Batman? Oh. Um, is it wrong that I want Batman to go away for a bit? No, it's not wrong at all. More Batman on that, la- more on that later. More on, more on Batman. And I, and, I don't, and I don't mean tumbling through time going away. No, no. Oh, that was good though. Was it? Yeah. Was it? I love that return of Bruce Wayne in a minute. We'll talk about that next time. Um, we'll talk about my love for Grant Morrison's Batman. If he can go Batman. away and let Dick become Batman again for a bit, I'll be delighted. Yeah. <clears throat> Dick was a great right Batman. I like Dick, Dick, I like Dick was the best Batman. He wasn't. He was a good I don't Batman. care what anyone says, Grayson. We were the best. <laughs> as Damien said so before he died. Um, oh man, Morrison's Batman is so good. You should read Morrison's Batman run. Um... Matt Ryan is returning once again to Constantine for a new uh, series, uh, but uh, different network oh. and animated. Shit. It's okay. going to be on so... CW's online service. Oh, shit. Like Vixen. It's like Vixen. Okay. CW that's cool. Seed. Um, and it's going to be on there. So Constantine lives on. New, new, new season, new network, same star. Which means that, like Vixen, he can jump into any of the shows at any time yeah. and rock up. Yeah. Because so, I, I recently watched the the Invasion crossover, and she didn't have many lines in it, but when she was on screen, I was like, oh shit. That's Vixen. That's Vixen. Which is all of that Invasion crossover. is like, I don't know what's going on, but oh shit, that's this person. Why, you've got Supergirl, and you're criminally underusing her. Super, well. Yeah. You've got Superman now, and they're criminally underusing Superman. I guess, but I guess using Superman with some restraint is probably a good thing, because then everything just becomes about Superman. And they've already had to turn around and say, yeah, we've got no plans for a Superman series. We'll probably use Tyler <laughs> Hanklin again. We've got no plans for a Superman series. Although, haven't they, this past week or so, been like, we, we're going to do another show. We'll make an announcement soon. There's there's some stuff happening, yeah. There's so, some stuff happening. Yeah, I mean, let's, let's face it. It's a Black Lightning show. It, for real? Yeah. It's in development. It's not happening yet, but it's in development. Oh, that's kind of cool. But though. it's not going to be part of the CW Arrowverse. Oh. But then why keep making new... It's a Fox thing. But then why keep making yeah. new DC TV shows that aren't part of that universe? Because Gotham's fucking terrible. Yeah. I mean, Arrow's not that good, but at least it links in with other... At least but, it paved the way for better shows to come along. But it's the free promotion as well. Like, if Black Lightning was part of the CW universe, then all you do is you debut that character uh, and then have a crossover shortly after his series starts with mm-hmm. one of the other shows. Or you debut the character in one of the other shows... And then do his series. Yeah. Because, I mean, 90% of the reason why people tuned into Flash would have been because they were like, oh, what was that about? An arrow? That guy got hit by lightning. We should go find out. (laughs) 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 Oh, the Flash is so (laughs) I do like the music, but at the same time, it's like, that's not a theme song. I only watch Flash and Supergirl now. I don't watch any of the others. Did I watch the one after Invasion? I'm trying to remember the one before the season break. I don't think I did. I've watched The Flash After Invasion, yeah. The one just before the future. No, that's the one that opens. I've seen the opening scene with John Wesley Shipp and Mark Hamill. Mm. Mark Hamill playing a really freaky looking alternate version of the trickster who Dirty. basically looks like a slightly middle aged, balding, fat Joker. Yeah. And it's like, what? It's pretty great. That is so goddamn meta. It's, it's untrue. It's so good. It's so good. I've been digging it. I've been really digging it this season. Um, I really like the. I really like John Wesley Ship as Jay Garrick. Mm. Well, I, I mean, you want to keep smart. him. You want to keep him around. You don't want to remove him from the show because he's so good. Yeah, um, they're very good at finding ways to write out characters but keep the actors around. Well, I mean, even even just like bring, bringing actors back, like you know, yeah. Linda Carter and, and Dean Cain and oh, um, Helen. It was original Supergirl, Helen Slater. Yes, she's in Supergirl as well somewhere. Isn't she? Somewhere, like somewhere, somewhere. <laughs> somewhere. famous Helen Slater. The famous Helen Slater. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for a cardboard cutout being filmed by Canon. 
That wasn't a comment on her acting talent, ladies and gentlemen. That was a comment on the fact that Canon just used cardboard cutouts of her for the flying sequences yeah. for numerous parts of the 1980s motion picture Supergirl. Technically, the first cinematic comic book universe, because there are references made to um, the Superman movies. It's... Including Jimmy Olsen. It's terrible. It's god-awful. It's so bad. I'm Superman's cousin. I'm not going to go and meet him. But instead, I'm going to fall in love with a boy. It's so And fight bad. a witch who's also in love with the boy. It's just, and I'm going to go to college. Oh, it's terrible. It's so bad. The Supergirl show is much better. Oh, the um, Supergirl show's great. But yeah, we're getting some more I've, I've, been dipping, I've been dipping in that again. And Constantine, I will... Do you know what? I now want to go back and watch the full for series, which I believe in the UK is on Amazon it's Prime. It's Amazon Prime, yeah. Yeah. I've, I've, I've still not finished it because I, when I knew it wasn't continuing, I was like, oh, well, I don't want to finish it now because then I'm just going to be no more. <clears throat> You'll well, be sad if you really enjoy it. Cause yeah. I'm like, oh, I was it. I was quite enjoying it when I watched it. I thought it was really good, and I thought it was, you know, kind of like, not really like anything that was around at the time or mm. that hadn't been around for a while. Like the, the the supernatural elements of it, I guess it put me in mind of something like um like an X Files meets Buffy kind of thing. Yeah, like like thinking. a preacher you'd stick with. <laughs> yeah. <'cause, laughs> oh man, I was soured on preacher. That was such a shame. <laughs> we'll see what that new season's like. Um, There's not not been a confirmation of season two for that, has yeah, there? Yeah, that's. Yeah, I think it's a full season though. Oh yeah. Oh, it is, it's isn't it? Yeah. One, so that'll be interesting. Um, so yeah, we're getting more Constantine. That's and the fan apparently, <laughs> apparently, Christopher, we are still getting the Batman. <laughs> There's been a lot of back and forth on this over the last couple of weeks. Sorry, like, sorry I need to put a question mark on that one. <laughs> Riddle me this. <laughs> that, that's the closest one. When is the Batman movie not the Batman movie? When yet. That's ah. when. <laughs> oh! Um, Ah, I get it because the movie is going to happen, but it's not happening yet. So Affleck, so Affleck was oh! on Kimmel. <laughs> Sorry, Dude, obscure so reference Mexican. to a one-off family so guy, I guess. Um, <laughs> we're, so Affleck was on Kimmel, and he's like, "I'm going to direct the next Batman. We're working on it." It's one of those things that's really frustrating because Live by Night took me a year and a half to write it and get it ready, and I worked really hard, and nobody gave a shit. Nobody was like, where's the by night? But with Batman, I keep on getting, where's the fucking Batman? And I'm <laughs> like, whoa, I'm working. Give me a second. Oh, shit. So what's happening so is, is like, ev- everyone's gone, you w- you wanted this since you were a kid. You wanted it so bad, you played Daredevil. Like, you want to be Batman. You want to be Batman. Why are we not getting the movie now? Where's the movie? And he's going, look, I'm not making it if it's going to be shit. I want to look after it like I looked after every so, other movie I've ever made. Yeah. I it, want to make sure that it is right. It is so coming. So everyone pay attention to my films, you shit. It is coming. It's just... I don't blame him for feeling bitter about it, because that's yeah. kind of... He, he sort of earned his reputation back for being an artistic force in Hollywood, but it took him years to do it. And then... And now all of a sudden Superman everyone's like... Along. Yeah, but, but no, no one... Like, he sort of is the least damaged from that. Yeah, I think he came out of that the best, really. But now he won't hear the end of it. Everyone's like, with Batman, with Batman, with Batman. He's like, piss off and let me make other films, you bastards. But I imagine Warner Brothers are a big part of it as well. They're probably mm. going, come on, where is it? Where is it? We need to know exactly how much we're spending. We need to know when we're shooting. And this also comes in tandem with the Justice League image that was recently released of the team lineup. Yes. Um, with Batman's armour looking more and more like the Nolan armour now. It's looking very muscular. Mm, but it's, it's got it's got a lot more um, plating, yeah. Hockey pads. It, it makes me think of the um, the Arkham Knight suit a little bit. Yeah, which um, that sort of metallic plating. I still think they should go in the direction with the Batman movie that um, Movie Bob suggested in the first of his How to Fix. Series, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where yeah. he basically went, but I like Ben go on the slim the proteins for a slimmer figure, be a bit more like a ninja, have Nightwing or Batgirl also operating, have Bruce be a cool, like. Fun to be around playboy billionaire character who's Batman when he needs to be. He's not obsessively patrolling every night. Like, if the signal's in the sky, he's off. If he's got a lead, he's off. Um, and have him freaking fight Man Bat. Do Batman versus a monster. Like, the Monster Men. Beijing girl. Dr. Hugo Strange and his Monster Men. I rewatched that Movie Bob video recently. And at the end, we suggest set the finale in the asylum. Because have it, have it be like Hugo Strange who turns Dr. Landstrom into the Man Bat or something. So yeah. there's a bit of a connection. Because then you can just get a shit ton of villains in the last act of the movie. Which is what everyone wants to see at this point. Everyone wants to see it. And recast yeah. the Joker. Oh, thank God. Like, if you have to keep the look, 
keep the look but recast him. God, please recast him. I don't think you can use the Joker now. I think that is... No, they're going to have to. That's the problem. That is... They suggest, he suggested using Leonardo DiCaprio. And then he, in the video, he, sh- he shows a clip from Wolf of Wall Street. You know, the bit where he's giving the big speech. Wolf of Wall Street's great. Because he's basically like, yeah. Yeah, that film. That film's about the Joker as a businessman. Yeah, pretty much. Like, that's what that is. I mean, for fuck's sake, Harley Quinn's in it. So, yeah. like, if you want any more proof that it's fate, <laughs> like, make yeah. Leo the Joker. It's like, yep. Or, or, suggestion, um, Affleck write a damn good sequence for Leto that makes us go, oh, Oh, this could work. Okay. Because Lau's choices were fucking abysmal in Suicide Squad. But it was only made worse by a dreadful script. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. I'd great. Give him a good script and see what he does with it. It was a, it was a, it was a bit of an... A, give him an actual conversation. It was a poor show. Give him a conversation. No, no characters have conversations in that movie. They just exposition dump on each other. I really hope Wonder Woman and Justice League come along this year and surprise us. I have no faith anymore. I really it's hope really they weird. Do. I really want them to be good. Got you optimists. But <laughs> Flash looks Flash's costume looks terrible. Yes. Cyborg looks boring. Cyborg is boring. Cyborg is so boring. The myth that Cyborg is an interesting character. I, I get that you want to have a black um hero in the Justice League and you should. John Stewart or John Stewart and, by, and, and to, to clarify we're talking about the Green Lantern yeah yeah not the incredibly funny political commentator yeah. and comedian John Stewart Green Lantern um, that, then, yeah, that would also be funny but yeah, yeah no, John it. Stewart Green Lantern or here's a suggestion just cast like I'm not saying aim to do this but if you have an African American actor who's fucking perfect for Superman what, or Wonder Woman or like yeah, yeah. or your Aquaman cast them you know what I mean? Like, just cast him. And then yeah. you don't have to worry about your representation. You're not forcing a boring character. Because Cyborg is boring, dude. <laughs> Cyborg has only been good once. And My Teen dude. Titans stopped in the late 2000s, guys. So, Cyborg, stop trying to make Cyborg happen. It's never going to happen. When there's trouble, you know who to call. Cyborg? No, I had Static Shock. <laughs> there you go. If you want African American character and get it, Static Shock in Static there. Static a good shot for Teen Titans. Yes. Black it, Lightning. Then again, if you made the Flash a bit more mature, you could get away with Static Shock being sort of the rookie member of the Justice League. That's one who's a bit more like up and coming. And then you can get that fix that the Avengers doesn't give us by not including Spider-Man. Because you'd be like, oh, there is a teen superhero in one of these sort of franchises over here. I, I still think that they could have done a they could have done a Black Barry Allen because the TV shows had no problem doing a Black West family. Yeah. Boom team. There yeah. you go. So, I, yeah. I, Black I'm, Batman. See... Now, this I'm, is only saying that, I'm only saying that because that Fat Man and Batman episode from years ago. It well, was a small cast episode. Yeah. Where Scott and Kevin basically just went, cast Idris Elba as Batman. <laughs> See, the thing is, though, <laughs> the problem with Batman yeah. is that he comes from a position of privilege and that's key yeah. to his character. Agreed. Which it's, in that kind it's of... That, it's that old yeah. money white families. Like, yeah, yeah. The Waynes probably several hundred years ago were like plantation owners yes, or factory yes, owners. Yes, and, You know, um... And that's not what they are like now, because obviously Thomas Wayne is an incredibly compassionate man who loves everybody, mm-hmm. and that's the point. A black super. Unless you're in Telltale, in which case he was a bastard. Apparently, I have yet to play episodes four and five, but I'm kind of not looking forward to them. No, I'm not... I enjoy the gameplay style a lot, and I've thoroughly enjoyed the first three. But as three wrapped up, I was like, I think this is going to end with me having more questions yeah. than satisfying answers. I've started to progressively look forward <clears> to <throat> Telltale games less and less now. It just kind of lost me a little bit. Well, at least there's another Batman game on the horizon, maybe, sort of, kind of. Oh, yeah, so... (laughs) (laughs) You just can't leave it alone, can you, Warners? So, Warner Brothers... It ended well enough. It ended with a fucking PC fiasco. Just let it breathe for five minutes. Warner Brothers, um... Yeah, they... They, uh... They stretched out the Batman thing a little longer than it was supposed to go for the old uh, Arkham games. Because we, in between um, City and Night, Montreal, what has Montreal squeezed out? The, the excellently uh, written, beautifully animated, but poorly fucking produced Arkham Origins. Yeah, Arkham Origins is a bit of a shit show. Yeah, I mean, uh, there's it, bits of it that I like. If, if, if you want to, if you want the best version of Arkham Origins, guys. Um, just go and watch the cutscenes on YouTube yeah, yeah sit, sit at your PS3 play some combat challenges on either Asylum or City and have your laptop next to the TV and watch the cutscenes all cut together as a movie of Origins 
There you go. There you go. That's it. That'll work. <clears throat> What's the best version of it you're ever going to get? That'll work because uh, it's um, all, the, all the Copperhead fight's pretty interesting. Copperhead fight's all right, yeah. And the Deathstroke match can be infuriating. It is infuriating. But it is one of the biggest sort of like feelings of triumph I've ever had playing a video game. Yeah, it's a cool boss fight, but it's a pain. Yeah. It's just the fact that it happens like a third of the way in, and all of the marketing campaigns are teed it up that he would be the biggest sort of threat in the game. But as someone. <laughs> Someone who has just finished Metal Gear Solid again recently. Yeah. Let me tell you, there's no bad thing about boss fights that are infuriating, but really cool. Yeah. Because <laughs> that game's full of them. And we'll find out more about um, that. Very soon. <laughs> um, but yeah, Warners have um, been squirreling away. Warners Montreal, mm-hmm. the guys who did a lot of the DLC for Arkham Knight and did Because Rocksteady Origins. are out. Rocksteady have said they're not running any more Batman. <clears throat> yeah, they gave us one more slice of that bat, bat pie. Um, the kind that gets into your head and you have to spend 350 bloody pounds just to play an <sighs> hour-long thing. I'm and not sure. I bought the Vita. I'm not um, sure what they're working on now. I watched Arkham VR. I've watched a playthrough. Not worth it. No. I'm... Mostly because, mostly from a narrative point of view. Yeah, yeah. Like, I would rather it just be sort of like a random heist. Like, just the plot just be a random heist from one or two of the villains. And you just play through it. That'd be cool. But, but they've the fact got to tie it into the Arkham storyline. But it sort of isn't, unless you really think about it too much. Mm. Like Basically, it's a dream sequence set sometime before Arkham Knight. That's basically it. But it doesn't confirm that at any point in the VR. So it just leaves you thinking, what the hell is happening? It's um, bullshit! All of it! All of it! Put that cookie down! Um, mm, there's cookie! So... <laughs> The thing is, you did the mouthful thing, and I immediately just thought of this weird bit in Spider Man 3 where Harry was born. Like, mm, so good. So good. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, James Franco, don't ever change. Uh, oh, oh, well, change something, because no, you, you look like you smell. Um, <laughs> James well, Franco. smell like he looks. James Franco, we cast him because he looks like he smells. <laughs> um, 4D. You could see, Sam Raimi slapped does, into his Victorian top hat and tails and he still looked like he'd stink of something horrible. Does the Resident Evil 7 4D candle smell like James, James Franco, Franco looks like he smells? Oh, God. <laughs> the James Franco VR experience. <laughs> it looks like he smells. Um, but it also looks like um, Warner's Montreal are ditching their previous project <clears throat> to work on another Batman game. So they've, they've thrown Suicide Squad out with the bathwater. Yeah. Because apparently they were working on a Suicide Squad. Suicide Squad? Long game title, if you ask yeah. me. <laughs> yeah. Apparently they were working on a Suicide Squad game, which has now gone down the crapper. Um, they'll probably resurface eventually. Like, well, they'll, they'll, most re- they'll retool try and flush it. down there, do. Um, <laughs> they'll probably retool it and, and make it more comic centric than. Yeah, maybe. I, don't, I have no idea how tied into the movie it was, so. I, w- I think it would have been aesthetically, just mm. to sell units more than anything. And also because um, you've got to have writing on everyone. Um, <laughs> yeah. But... No, there's no confirmation that, that this new thing they're doing is an Arkham game. But apparently they are working on a Batman game now. Yeah. Um, our thoughts? No. No. Leave it alone. It. I've heard rumours that it's a Damien game. I don't want that. Oh, God, it'll be Arkham then. It'll be Arkham. Like They'll make Batman. it Arkham. Yeah, yeah. Even though Talia died, spoiler alert, in Arkham City. They'll make it Arkham. Get away from the microphone, cat. Get away from the microphone. <laughs> Trying to jingle her bell. There's a fat cat on our, on our recording table. Get away, fat cat. Get away. <laughs> um, um, yeah, it'll be, it'll be, it'll end up being like their version of Batman Beyond or something. Yeah. I don't want that. I don't want that. I don't want that at all. I've um, seen the future Damien in the comics. It doesn't end well for anyone. I just want... Again, read Grant Morrison's Batman run. I mean, yeah, again, can Batman just go away now for a bit? Yeah, probably. Can we have less... Can Batman just exist for a little while, please? As a comic book, that'd be great. I'd be very happy with that. And maybe, and like maybe just like a comic book and not six comic books. Yeah, that too. And to be fair, well, actually, he's only ba- Batman and Detective Comics. I'd, like, I'm cool with that. Yeah, all the, at the moment, it's just Batman. And, uh, there's Batman, All Star Batman, and Detective Comics. And Detective Comics is more team focused. It's really kind of focused on Batwoman more than it is Batman. Uh, um, thingy Kane. Yeah, Kate Kane. Kate Kane. Um, so Kate Kane. Candy Kane. Candy Kane. Candy Man. She's very pale. The Candyman can. The Candyman can't. Because he's home, Simpson man. The Candyman could, but would he? Um, so How yeah. much wood can a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck can chuck? Candy? Candy! <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Spice! Um, so yeah. <laughs> Excuse me, do you have Prince Albert in a can? <laughs> you do? Well, you better let the poor guy out! Ha ha! Ha ha! Fresh cheese pizza! <laughs> <laughs> I love you. <laughs> welcome, welcome to episode twenty-nine of the Curry Cast, <laughs> the finest Tim Curry impressions brought to you every week. Um, I don't want to talk about any more news, Christopher. Thank God, we're twenty-nine episodes in. It's twenty-nine episodes, and we've in. changed the format. <laughs> We've changed the format to just endless Tim Curry impressions. <laughs> well, there's a, well, there's a few more. There's a few more things to touch on, but they're mostly announcements and footage. Well, let's touch on these things. Let's touch I'll on touch things. on you, Christopher. You swine. Give, give, um, you feed me some things for once. Okay. Um, close Go your eyes. Box of Quality Street. Oh no, no, no! I've got something right here. Uh-huh. Close your eyes. Oh no. <laughs> uh-huh. Close your eyes. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay. The smell. Oh, the smell. The smell. It smells like James Franco. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've got our episode title. <laughs> the smell of James Franco. The smell of what James does James Franco. Franco smell like? That is going to be the title of this episode. <laughs> <laughs> what does James Franco smell like? You tell, it answers on a postcard. And now, um, and now everybody who's looked at the title and went, why is that the title? <laughs> Now you know! It's because... That's what... because It's because James Franco looks like he smells. Uh, um, do you know what else looks like it smells? What? Um, that cat. A lack of segue, yeah. That, I'm getting slightly distracted by the cat on my lap. What else looks like it smells? My heart. What about your heart? It smells of one? chocolate, rubies, joy and mirth. Because, Why? good sir, by Jingo. Uh, a film franchise very near and dear to my heart made an announcement this past weekend. Um, Transformers. Get out. <laughs> Gremlins. No, God, I wish. No, um... Harry Potter. It couldn't care less, to be honest. Fantastic Beasts and where are they? They're in the case. Fantastic Beasts and the case of the <laughs> unsolved... thing. Alice in Wonderland. Alice in <laughs> your Wonderland. No. Um, no. Nope. Don Mancini. Don Don Mancini. Don Mancini made an announcement that on the 9th of January, uh, principal photography began for Cult of Chucky. Now, this is the seventh instalment. Is this his Scientology? Into a 30 year old franchise. (laughs) No. Because everyone's doing one nowadays. No, this is the sequel to Curse of Chucky. And what it sounds like, based on the synopsis released uh, online this week to sites like Clean and Cool and everybody, uh, this looks like, and Den of Geek, this looks like it might be the last Child's Play movie. <gasps> As in, intending it to be the last Child's Play movie. I am. Um, um... <clears throat> yeah. Brad Dourif surprised the role of Chucky, um, to damn right. Uh, Fiona Dourif is returning to play Nika, who's in Curse of Chucky, the main character in Curse of Chucky. Yep. Jennifer Tilly is there to play... As far as we know, human Tiffany, um, who was last seen at the end of Curse of Chucky. Spoiler alert! Um, Jennifer Tilly. And it most, I know. Jennifer yeah. Tilly. And most interestingly, Alex Vincent is returning to acting to play Andy Barclay. So Andy Barclay's back. The I'm original. All right with that. Not the Jimmy Olsen Andy Barclay. The I'm original right Andy Barclay is back to play Andy Barclay. Um, here is the official synapses. Here is the official synapses. Do it in a voice, Chris. Which voice would you like? Just do it in a voice. Tim Curry. All right, do it as Tim Curry. I can't do a Tim Curry. I'll do a Tim Curry. We'll take a sentence each. Okay. The official synopsis of Cult of Chucky as read by Tim Curry from the past. I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> Confined to an asylum for the criminally insane for the past four years... Mika Pierce, Fiona Dorif, is erroneously <laughs> convinced that she, not Chucky, murdered her entire family. <laughs> <laughs> but when her psychiatrist introduces a new therapeutic tool to facilitate his patient's group sessions, an all-too-familiar good guy doll with an innocently smiling face, a string of grisly deaths begins to plague the asylum, and Nika starts to wonder if maybe she isn't crazy after all. (laughs) 
And now do it in his voice from Congo. <laughs> I can't remember how he sounds in Congo. Shit Russian. <laughs> Andy Barkley, Alex Vincent. Chuck is now grown up nemesis. <laughs> That's really good. From the original child's play, races to Nico's aid. But to save her, he'll have to get past Tiffany. Oscar nominee, Jennifer Tilly. <laughs> Chuck is long ago bride, who will do anything, no matter how deadly or depraved, to help her beloved devil doll. Now just say the word space really loudly. Space! <laughs> oh, that's really good! Oh my god! That's really scary! Um, <laughs> thank you, Mr. Curry. <laughs> I see you've recovered from your stroke. <laughs> Can we do any more films soon? Maybe. <laughs> oh god, that was dark. Oh, so do you be lucky? <laughs> I've still not watched the Rocky Horror Picture Show remake. <laughs> um, it's literally a remake. Is he all right as the narrator? I don't know. I, what, I've, what I've seen of it is, it is they're not remaking it with the new cast. They're remaking it with the new cast who are trying to do impressions of the old cast. Yeah, that was the main thing that bugged so, me with um, Frank and in the trailer. She's yeah. basically just doing a Tim Curry impression. I was like, just own the role. Be your own Frank and Furter. Yeah. Um, it's all over. But we're not talking about the Rocky, the Rocky Horror, Picture, Horror Show. Picture Show. We're talking about the horror picture that is show... C- Cult thing. of Chucky. Cult of Chucky, motherfucker. Chucky film set in an asylum with a good guy doll used as a therapy tool. Yes. Yeah, all right. I am all on board. And also, brilliant, because what Curse of Chucky did really well was it got away from the sort of the wacky hijinks tone of the previous two movies. It returned. Well, but it returned to the whole like, this doll's alive. You're insane. No, it's a live thing of the original premise. This doll's alive! But it knew Get the... me a doctor, quick! Get me a doctor! Um, <laughs> pop it. Um, now give me a smashing. Smashing! <laughs> <laughs> they all float. Uh, okay, so... They all float! And you'll float too! Um, <laughs> so, uh, it... it it, it contains it because Curse of Chucky did something brilliant. It went, hi audience, we know you know he's alive. We're not going to waste any time. We're going to show you stuff that only you see. Yeah. And then we're going to make you wait. Because he doesn't talk wait. until 55 minutes into the Yeah, film. it takes a long time to get there. But when you do, it's, it's, oh it's, it's that brilliant. But the girl under the bed covers, she's like, Chucky, I'm scared. And he just starts creasing with laughter out of nowhere. Like, <laughs> you fucking should be. <laughs> it's just like, yes, yeah. bitch. Yeah. Um, yes, queen. Yes, queen. With a with um, a really nice reliance on practical effects. And considering the fast turnaround of this movie, mm-hmm. shooting from this month, intending to be out on home video by October, which again, smart decision. Because the last one was made with a budget of like five million. And they made about like 80, 90 million back on home sales in the first few months. Yeah. Because people went... Oh shit! A Chucky movie! You don't need a similar like for an already established franchise like this. Yeah. Especially one that's got a cult following rather than a huge mass following. And I think the title's kind of genius when you think about yeah. that. Cult of Chucky. Because I'm assuming that's more to do with the fact that everything's tying up. Yeah. It's like people who've been victimised by him over the course of their life. Sort of like the latest and the original are all kind of coming together. Bringing Tiffany back in human form is a genius idea because we get to see some Jennifer Tilly. <laughs> but like just, she obviously had a ball making the two she made so it's like excellent. Like she's involved. Closing it up with Andy. Fiona Dorif was brilliant in the last one. Yep. I've absolutely fallen in love with her in Dirk Gently. She's freaking hilarious. Check that out. She's freaky in Dirk Gently. I will check that out. Um, so I'm, I'm psyched man. I'm so excited. It'll probably get like a horror fest screening. If they finish an edit of it in time for August it'll probably yeah, you got a fright fest or something like, like that. Well, it'll definitely have a trailer by then, at least. So yeah, because they did an announcement Let's teaser, which was clips from the previous movies, uh, with a caption basically saying, "In 2017, the fun, the fear returns." And it's the just fun. like, yeah, the mother. fear. Curse of Chucky returns. Mother lovers, it's about damn time. <laughs> Cult of Chucky, indeed. Oh God, I just accidentally sold the wrong Blu-ray. Um, no. So- now, uh, oh, that cry sounded auto-tuned. Oh, God. So, the Golden Globes happened, and uh, we'll get to the main event of the Golden Globes in a second. We'll touch on that. But mm. but first, a new teaser trailer for Beauty and the Beast premiered as part of it. A 30-second teaser. 
including a bit of the song Bell Reprise, slash reprise, as sung by um, Emma Watson and a computer. Um, it's odd, it's keeping up with the weirdly sort of sombre yet romantic tone of the previous trailers, where it's basically, Disney's Beauty and the Beast, isn't everything a little bit sad? Same with his Beauty and the Beast, but dark. Oh, like God. That. This looks like it's the that first subtitle. This looks like the first live action adaptation of this run, where they've just gone, "Oh, just do the same as the film." Yeah, just do, just do the same. <coughs> <coughs> Which begs the question: Why do it at all? Take no risks. <clears throat> have no differences. Just do that, but with people. So why do it? I, I don't know. <coughs> Jungle Book. Why do it? Is it because you can sell that movie all over again? Probably. <coughs> well, you could sell that movie all over again. You stick that in theatres. You're going to make loads of cash. Um, Jungle Book worked because it was like, this is the first time this story, or any version of this story, <clears throat> as far removed as it is from the books, but <gasps> as close as it is to like the, the version that is the most widespread, has never been told in a way that is this visually enveloping. Uh, yeah, I'll go for that. Like, we can yeah. show the jungle and these animals, these creatures, and Mowgli's life in the jungle and everything. Disney tried it in the 90s. In the most convi- yeah, and, it was, and it, it was a sort of cheap Tarzan film. Yeah, it wasn't very good. <clears throat> it just didn't work. But that's what's so great about this. It's like, we can envelop you in this world now. Um, and it was it was beautiful. It doesn't follow the Disney film exactly, it sprinkles in enough of the original source material to to make it feel a bit more um, sort of of a grand epic compared to obviously just sort of the the jazzy funky time that the original one was, um, and, and you know and it gives different interpretations of the characters we know, like you like Shere Khan in the original, well this one is definitely cut from the same cloth but he's a different kind of villain, mm. so you know you get to sort of change the perceptions of the characters a bit and play with them and it worked Maleficent didn't work because they strayed way too far from why that character had appeal in Sleeping Beauty and then loosely remake Sleeping Beauty in the final ten minutes um yeah Cinderella hmm. did okay because again it was just oh look a modern telling of this fairy tale yeah that has some basis in the Disney version um directed by Kenneth Branagh but it's got that weird sort of washed out look to it, which a lot of modern films seem to have now. Like, if you've seen all the trailers for the new Underworld, it basically just looks, yeah. like, basically just looks like they whacked some blue crepe paper over the camera. It looks it's real ridiculous. bad. It looks real mm-hmm. bad. I mean, good on Kate Beckinsale. Close up a franchise, earn some more cash, but, you know. Um, <laughs> sorry, the cat just got up to only turn around and sit awkwardly on my legs again. <laughs> <laughs> she likes a bit of attention, that one, doesn't she? She does, doesn't she? The other one sat by our feet in a box. I'm gonna kick her. I'm gonna kick her. Um, With love. Um, but what I'm basically saying is that the puddles um, of love, they all kind of had a reason to tell the story because they're like, oh, we're gonna do it different. We're gonna do it a bit like this. We're gonna do it a bit like that. This just looks like they've gone, we're gonna do Beauty and the Beast, but hey, this time, Belle is British. <laughs> <laughs> That's basically it. Like, this that is time, the only difference. She is British. And she sounds dreadful. Now, this isn't a comment on Emma Watson singing. This is a comment more... Kind of is, though. Well, I don't know. I think this is more an observation of the arrangement and the edit of this trailer. Yeah. Because the way the song's performed, like, you see a visual from the song briefly. It's the bit of her running out in the field, like, I want adventure in the great white somewhere. But in the trailer, it's more like, I want it more than I, I can tell. tell. And it's like, do you? Do you though? Like, do you, you don't, really? You don't sound like you want it. You don't sound like um, you want there's a reason. Anything. There's a reason why the Disney animated movies, specifically during the Renaissance, tended to cast like Broadway actors and stuff in the roles because they can fucking sell a song. Come on! I'm sure Emma Watson probably can. I, I, I will reserve judgment till I see the full film. But yeah, out of context, it's hard to tell. But this is but in it, this context, they, they it make not. they make the song sound so depressing and quiet, and, mm-hmm. and it's just like, huh? Mm-hmm. It, what is this? I agree. But the audio is gross. Um, so there is that. Um, I get less excited for this the more we see footage of it. I remember us first talking about this and going, do you know what? Okay. Let's, let's, give let's it see a what shot. it's like. Let's give it a shot. And now I'm like, I don't know if I want to watch this. Um, but there's one funny thing that's come out of Beauty and the Beast before we go back to the Golden Globes. <coughs> Have you seen... <clears throat> 
the pictures of the Disney Store doll. I have seen the pictures uh, of the Disney Store doll. They're incredible. They're incredible. That's a word for it. Because when these films come out, apart from Jungle Book, because, you know, here's a small child in his pants. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but when they did uh, Maleficent, they released a Maleficent doll with the likeness of Angelina Jolie. When they did Cinderella, they did a Cinderella doll with the likeness of the actress, which is pretty, you know, it's pretty spot on. It's sort of a mix of doll and, uh, you know, portrait. Lily, what's her name? Lily Doodad. Lily Ding Dang Doodad. Like, it looks all right. It's, you know, it's pretty on point. <clears throat> Here, uh, and I recommend you Google this as we discuss it, because good God. Yep. Here's a Mortson's Bell. Oh! Oh! Now, Emma Watson is... Oh. Emma Watson is not conventionally Hollywood pretty. Um. And that, that isn't, that isn't like a, that isn't a sort of a, oh, I think she's attractive. That's just sort of a, like, when you look at the archetype of, you know, like... I don't know. I if you go to the classic probably, Hollywood... Maybe. If you got the Hollywood style thing, like, there is... There is a pattern. Uh, it's, it's unfair. It's horrible. It's very shallow. But like, there is that kind of thing. So to depict her as a doll, they've gone. Well, you know, we want to convey her actual likeness, but then they've somehow misappropriated her facial features. It's also, it looks like they've sized up the head sculpt by about twenty five percent. Yeah, it's freaky. But <clears throat> the reason why I'm saying that is because. Hollywood pretty would translate to a doll because they're sort of Hollywood pretty as well. Like, yeah. Barbie has a Hollywood pretty face. So they've tried to capture her likeness, and in doing so, they've sort of made this unflattering, like... You've seen the video to Lionel Richie's Hello, right? Yeah, that bust. It looks like the bust of Lionel Richie, but for Emma Watson. It's like the blind girl in the class has tried to sculpt Emma Watson's Yeah, it, does, it doesn't look like the bust of Lionel <clears throat> Richie. It doesn't look like Lionel Richie. Then it again, is, hang on. It is to her then what again, that bust si- is to Lionel Side Richard. profile, if you give it a moustache. Oh, maybe. But the m- person it looks like the... Mo- oh, my God, someone else has made the someone comparison on this else page. Made the comparison. Oh, my God, I didn't even know that was a thing. That's amazing. But the, but a lot of the comparisons that it looks like Justin Bieber. Uh, I don't see that so much. I think it kind of does, but it's more the brow, I it think. It's more the like... brow and the jaw. It just looks unpleasant. It just does look, it does look weird. It doesn't, it doesn't look right. You can see her in there. But she's trapped. Yeah, I mean, I recently got the Big Chief <laughs> Studios... Her soul is trapped in there. I she recently can't got get the, out. I recently got the Big Chief Studios Ninth Doctor, uh, which I need to show you, actually, it's upstairs. Um, do you need to show it, <clears> though, Chris? Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, you do. God, yeah. I want to um, see it. I want to touch it. It's not Bob on. I'm going to put it in my pants. But it looks enough like Eccleston that you're like, yeah, okay, that's him. But then you put it next to a photo of him and you go, no, it's not. Do you know what I mean? This yeah. is like that, but much, much worse. And what makes it even more difficult to look at is when you look at the packaging, you can see Emma Watson's She's there. Face Her face is there right next to it. Near the face of this thing. It's so weird. It's just, oh, God. And, and, and worst of all, Emma Watson dolls have been made before, admittedly of younger Emma Watson. Um, still Emma Watson, though. But they still look like Emma Watson. I'm trying to bring up this Harry Potter uh, ones that you can... Um, pick up online, that look a lot better. Uh, like, a lot better. Uh, and But they're based on, like, you know, tiny Emma Watson. Yeah. They still look like flaming Emma Watson. I'm trying to find it for you. They're sort of... I believe you, Christopher. Down. I believe you. I'm going to click on the wrong thing here. That's, that's talk, not... Talk amongst yourselves, that's everyone. That's not Hermione Granger. <clears throat> there we are. That's Hermione Granger. Oh, God. Actually, now I'm looking at it. Right, these are made by uh, Star Ace. Um, Hermione Granger from Philosopher's Stone that definitely looks like 11 year old Emma Watson yeah that's a pretty damn good likeness um, 14 year old Emma Watson not so much yeah, the Azkaban so doll that lighting there maybe maybe the lighting does a lot I feel I think that that and the Bell doll both sort of share elements of her actual likeness but this one's sort of like a softer softer version yeah so like an inoffensive whereas the other one looks like they've sort of do you know what it looks like? It looks like they've gone, right, we need to design the doll. They've taken the photo of Emma Watson, the photos of Emma Watson from different angles, then they've whacked tracing paper over it mm. and just drawn the line art version of her face. It looks out of proportion with yeah. the body of the doll. That too. That yeah. doesn't it, it just doesn't. Either. It just looks like they've got the scaling wrong. Um, so It's very strange. <clears throat> Beating the Beast is looking 
fucking abysmal. Yeah, it's not um, looking good. I don't get I don't get the really big rush of love for it online. Everyone's going, I can't wait to see this. And I'm like, you can watch it any time you like. Nostalgia it's on your is a powerful DVD thing, shelf. man. Nostalgia is a powerful thing. Yeah, I guess this is the ma- I guess this is a, the first example of like the mainstream nostalgia at work in recent years because everything else from recent years has been like, oh, there is a massive fan base for this, whereas this one is like everyone loves this movie. Mm. I can't. I I sort of hope. I mean, I don't go into a film wanting to hate it. I kind of hope this is bad. Why? Only because it would be only because it would be the highest profile backlash in terms of that was dreadful. Can you stop doing this now and just make new stuff, please? I don't think that, I don't think it being bad with anyone in any favours though. I'd rather it be good. Oh yeah, in terms of spending my money and going to watch it, yeah. But I don't know, man. I don't want this it might have that. the power to change things for the better. You, you've changed things. Speaking of changing things, uh, Meryl Streep gave it a jolly good go at the Golden Globes um, when, in her acceptance speech for um, Lifetime Achievement Award, she had a good old chat, didn't she? She had a good old chat to an audience of uh, Democrats and Republicans based on thousands. the facial reactions. Um, Although the smile on Amy Adams' face warmed my heart. Um, but then it always does. Uh, it's Amy Adams, isn't it? It's Amy Adams. Um, she basically, without naming him once, talked about the power of performance and art and how it can be used negatively and discussed how basically she saw a performer this past year say all the right things and make people laugh and entertain everyone all the way to the most prestigious seat in the country, the most, the highest position of power you can have in America, and how we all should have basically rejected this person many times, but specifically at the moment he mocked a disabled reporter um, way early into his campaign. Yeah, and that, that video is all over the place. You can go and see that. It's pretty horrendous. His backlash to her speech was basically overrated actress Meryl Streep. Says I was mocking a disabled reporter. I wasn't. I was mocking. I wasn't mocking his disability. I was mocking his groveling after he changed an article when we dispute some facts. Sure, you yeah. Were. Sure, none you were. of these things happened the way he's describing it. Sure, all. you do it. And it's fun sure. how he. Oh, he was mocking his groveling whilst also mocking the guy's hands. Yeah. And everything. It's just like. Yeah, yeah. Oh, good lord! You're a giant prick. By the way, are you actually going to look after America? No, probably nope, not. Okay. Probably not. Too busy having to go at, shouting at Hamilton and freaking oh god. They're taking they're taking longer to uh, what's it arrange the meeting for the investigation of potential voter fraud and, and hacking during the election. Maybe it's because they need more time to actually come up with come up with some evidence. Yeah, sure. And it's sure. like, okay. no, Donald. Um, it's actually, because the meeting you were going on about was scheduled for Friday, not Wednesday. <laughs> Always was scheduled for Friday, so you're just making up bullshit now. It's mental. He has an army of twats following him. Oh. I'm not saying that everyone who everyone who voted for him is not is a twat because there'll be people who vote for him because they want to financially change the structure of their work so that they can pr- provide for their family. But the people who are still like, yes, this man is the right man. Yeah, you're deluded. Yeah, you're insane. I don't want to say too much on it, other than that. Oh, I'll say, I'll, 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 to... I'll say it. You're insane. I, I you're want... insane. I don't want to say too much of it because it's not our country. But I, I would urge you to go and listen to what Meryl Streep has to say. It's an interesting speech, whether you agree with it or not. And also, just I just express some solidarity and sympathy with our friends across the pond because we're mm, we're yeah. also in the grip of a, of a of a real right wing resurgence. Um, not to the degree that maybe you guys are with the way your government's gone, but there's a lot more finicketing, yeah, finicketing around but on our end. It's a tough time, and everyone <laughs> needs to stick together and just be good to each other. So let's do that. Let's yeah. think about that. Uh, Unless you're insane. Sorry, I had to undercut the genuine message of warmth and humanity with a wacky comment. And on the subject of being good to each other... Oh? You've been good to us and sent us some lovely questions we're going to answer. Oh, I thought you were going to blow me. No, no, no. Oh, okay. No, that's... that's No, no. Um, <laughs> no, you've, you've soured it now, Chris. Have I? Yeah. You put, Have... You've left a sour taste in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> the real reason I've been in Lincoln for five episodes, Shut kids, spat. is uh, it was to, because court appointed order made me stay away from Matthew. Yes, <laughs> and now he's back, and nothing is safe. Um, <laughs> God, the cat's looking. I was like, "What are you on about?" Little hello from Jacob. Oh, okay. Hello, hello, uh, hello again, Chris and Matt. Just wondering if you have a pan account and what is its name. Lots of love, Jacob. I have no idea what that is, so probably not. Um, Unless you mean PSN account. 
Yeah, we have a PSN account. Uh, yeah, we're both on PlayStation, but the best the best thing for that is not to add us. It's just to follow us on Twitch. Yes. Because uh, get you know get conversation going. You know what I mean? Because you don't play much multiplayer stuff either. Yeah. If you um, want to know where our Twitch links are, um, just search Big Damn Cast, <laughs> and you'll probably find us. We need to get our stuff on the Twitch so people can find us. Either. Yeah. We don't Twitch often um, anymore, but when we do, we Twitch hard. We t- we do Twitch hard. Twitch hard. We Twitch hardy. So I've drank so much coffee. Um, we Twitch hardy boys. Twitch. <laughs> We're just going to Twitch stream uh, one of us reading a Hardy Boys book. Well, we can do that, because Twitch IRL's a thing now. Oh, God, it is, isn't it? Yeah. But, yeah. Neither of us have tits, though, so it's not... We're not gonna well, take off. well, you say that. Um, <laughs> hey, guys, it's Ryan Joins. Hello, Ryan. Ryan Joins! It's been a while since my last email, <laughs> but I've been really busy with school lately, so I haven't been able to find the time to ride one. I just wanted to say a couple things. First off, thanks to Chris for recommending Inside Number 9 in one of his videos. Not sure which one, but I remember it happening. I watched the Christmas special and thought it was a really cool show. With an enjoyable dark tone and I'm planning to buy the DVDs once I get some money for them. Did he score the email? No, I just sang that. Oh um, my god. Because I'm... Going crazy. Um, I only really had... Going crazy? <laughs> yes. I only really had one question, though. It's also sort of a recommendation for you both. I asked a while ago if either of you had seen much anime, and the, you both said you hadn't, but I was curious if you have ever heard of One Punch Man. If not, I wanted to recommend it to you, as I think you may enjoy it. The show is a satire of superheroes, and it follows a character who trains to become a superhero, not because of tragic events, but rather because he's bored. Um, <laughs> That's a good premise. I like that. He becomes so strong he can win <clears throat> any fight with one punch. And the series shows how he interacts with those in a world full of superheroes and villains. It's only 12 episodes, and though it's no more of a parody of anime heroes and villains, I know a lot of anime fans who enjoy it and has it has some spectacular animation, so hopefully you'll enjoy it. And finally, Happy New Year to you both. I'm looking forward to more of the big damn cast throughout the year. Thanks for reading, Ryan. Well, look forward no longer, Ryan, because we're already delivering more of the big damn cast to you right at this very start of the year. Um, I've heard of One Punch Man, but like most anime, I just haven't got around to it because... I think it's a great name. I'm just finding time to watch these things. But I'm very much aware of it, and it is on my list of things to check out. I'm sure as well, initialising it is OP Man. Overpowered Man. Which he is, because he's he One is. Punch Man. Yeah, I'm going to check that out. One Punch... Man. Maybe we should um, pass to Crunchyroll for a sponsorship. <laughs> is Crunchyroll over here? Or yeah. Is it... Oh yeah, it's all over it. It's all oh, over it's our Animax face next to chest. Here. No, Crunchyroll's in. Or is Animax a different thing? Quite possibly. I don't know. Crunchyroll, Crunchyroll rocks up on my PS3 occasionally saying like, download the app. Crunchyroll! Why, why do they call it Crunchyroll? Because, you know, it's crunchy like a roll. It's crunch. No, roll shouldn't be crunchy. They should be soft. <laughs> They should be soft and aromatic and smell like James Franco. Um, ah, the smell of it. Ian's got in touch with us. Not Ian. Dear biggest of Christophers and damnedest of Matthews. That's the correct way around. <laughs> well damnedest done. damnedest of Matthews. First time emailer, long time listener. Hang on, isn't that what you call a, isn't that what you call a, like a, a gathering of, of Matthews? A damnedest a of damnedest Matthews. A damnedest of Matthews. Yeah. I'll have to get, I'll have to get the lads together and we'll, we'll, we'll <laughs> officiate it. A damnedest of Matthews. <laughs> Hope you had the most <laughs> merriest of Christmas times, and Chris had fun at Panto. I, I haven't seen the latest much. episode of those shows or the trailer, <laughs> so I can't comment on those. No, I really did get into Big Finish, so that's where I'm getting my DW fix from now on. I still is. haven't bought season nine on DVD. You made the correct decision. But dark and sexy and right now class finally aired on the telly box. Two eps a week for the past four weeks. Oh, I can't wait for the millions of viewers who will experience the dark Patrickness, sex, sexy Patrickness, and right now Patrickness of class. That was difficult to read, but I think I paired it off nicely. Things I enjoyed in 2016. Oh, Zine's a list of things you enjoyed in 2016. Yeah, following on from last week's discussion of um, everything that was great last year and everything that was going to be great this year till we read out the things of this year and realised there's not much great happening this year at no. all. <laughs> um, Deadpool. Fuck yes. 10 Cloverfield Lane. Yes. Arrival. I haven't seen it, but you, you dug it. Arrival's very good. Um, and Rogue One. Yep. Ash vs. Evil Dead, even though I've not seen the finale. Oh, I need to see season two. I have yeah. not finished season one. Um, Yonderland. 
You know, I want to dip into that. I, should, I really it's should. Now that... I've got now TV. I should. I should watch. It's that. the horrible histories, guys, isn't it? Yes. Oh yeah. yes. Um, oh yes. Yes. With a budget and their own show. Yay! Uh, American Horror Story: Roanoke slash My Roanoke Nightmare slash Return to Roanoke: Three Days in Hell. That's a lot of Roanoke things. <laughs> and I'm sure many others, but I've forgotten. Oh, and Little Bobby Podcast, which started in 2016, which I can't remember the name of at the moment. Um, small, small dang pod. Small dang pod. Small dang pod. Um, small things, dank pod. Things I'm looking forward to in 2017. Oh. Sorry, the cat's moulded into my arm. The next Cloverfield film. <laughs> What's happening? Star Wars Episode Eight. Yes. A series of unfortunate events. That sounds real soon. That right? is that is out the day this episode lands. Oh. Yeah. Pretty psyched. Maybe. Well, still, still a little, still a little resilient after that last trailer. Little, I might give a little, it a shot. Sort of filled with reservations, but I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna binge at least three or four on Friday. Maybe the new Star Trek series? Question mark. No offense. That's the police drama. Oh right. With the um, glass <laughs> from the thick of it, Terry okay. from the thick of it, as a. I thought just saying the new Star no. Trek. No offense, guys. No it's offense, like, as no in like thing. criminal offense. Yeah. Yes. 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 Oh god, um, yes. Inside number nine. Outside number ten. American horror story. I mean, whenever the new seasons of Ash vs. Evil Dead and Rick and Morty are, Rick and Morty should be real soon, hopefully. Rick and Morty was rumoured to be December last year. Oh, and then it turned out. Not they finished it. They just or they're finishing, and yeah. it's a case of like, do we start putting it out while we're wrapping the rest yes. of it, or do we wait sure we've got it? Put it in my all eyes. Finished. Yeah. Put it in my eye holes. I'm currently wearing Rick and Morty. Those are my eye holes. I'm currently wearing Rick and Morty. Thanks for that. Excellent. Those are my eye holes. I'm good for it. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Basically, Matt's got me a Rick and Morty. Ricky Taffy. <laughs> Matt's got me a Rick and Morty T-shirt for Christmas, two years running. They better keep making Rick and Morty t-shirts. As long as they keep making good ones, I'll keep buying them. Um, <laughs> he, Rickety also, Rick, son! Ian's also looking forward to Lego Batman. Yeah, me too. Me too. Pirates 5. Sort of. Don't judge me! No, I'm um, sort of looking forward to it. Also, I've got my eye on a cure for wellness. And yeah! The Dark Tower. Yeah, I mean, I know you're ready to... I'm feeling about you're ready feeling... to You're ready to suckle the gunslinger's can, barrel. I can definitely wrap my mouth around the old Dark Tower. Um, but I, a cure cool for wellness, I've got to admit, I first saw anything of that in the, like, the Odeon sort of yeah. know, membership tr- teaser trailer. I was like, what is that? And then I saw the full trailer about a week ago and I went, okay, that looks creepy as sin. We like creepy. That looks like an American Horror Story series too that I can actually get behind. We like creepy and sin. <clears throat> ah. <laughs> anyway, I'm big damn rambled on for too long now. I look forward to anything else which 2017 throws at us. Also, the many videos, live stream, and podcast you two will be up to in the big damn 2017. That's the plan. <laughs> Random crazy questions, and maybe a cheeky DW1 too. Um, <laughs> favorite board game? Wow, that is a. Question I was never expecting to be asked again mm. in the 21st century, and I'm glad you did ask. How about you? What's yours? Um, <clears throat> I, don't if it, I don't know if it classes as a board game, but I'm, I, if you're going to bring something out at a party, then it has to be Cards Against Humanity. I would I would count that, simply because card games are usually numerical. Yeah. Whereas Cards Against Humanity is more about like the group effort and trying to one-up the other person and everything. But I don't play a good deal um, of board games. I played <clears> the, uh, the countdown board game over New Year's, and that was pretty good. Cluedo. Cluedo. I do love Cluedo. I can yeah, sink Cluedo's my teeth into Cluedo. Um, Just not Monopoly. Anything but Monopoly. Monopoly's fucking I don't bad. mind Monopoly, but I, I think I have to be a little... Oh, sorry, the cat nearly slipped off my legs. Uh, I think I have to be slightly drunk to play Monopoly. You have to block off six weeks of free time to play Monopoly. I get ruthless. I start bribing. <laughs> I'm like, well, you could charge me uh, 200 on this go, or I could give you a cool foul. And you let me have your uh, Park Avenue. Um, you're not having Park Avenue, Chris. We've talked about this. <laughs> Park Avenue's mine. It's not for sale. I built this Park Avenue with my own two hands. Your Ivo Shandor? Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. McDonald's or KFC? Oh, snap. Do you know what? That shouldn't be as difficult a question it's as I thought it was going to be. It's not a really easy question. I think... Oh, 
I'm thinking McDonald's, but KFC is something I have so rarely that when I do, it's kind of really enjoyable. So it's like a treat. KFC is the correct answer. Mm, see, I've got a combo. I'll use a bus ticket to get a Big Mac and medium fries for two quid. Then I'll buy a small Coke and I'll buy a snack wrap. And that's me for like four quid. Settled. I think it's got to be imitation beef. I think I'm going to have to go to McDonald's, actually. You're a fucking monster, Chris. Yeah, yeah, it's those, KFC. Those fries just fold so You're nicely. wrong. You're wrong. <laughs> You're Ryan. You're Ryan. <laughs> I am. <laughs> um, are you excited for the return of Daleks, Cybermen, Weeping Angels, and Missy in Series 10? Because, of course, we'll be back along with many other Moffatisms. Is this a Matt and Chris reluctantly answer a Doctor Who question? Yes. Uh, so I'm going to reluctantly say I don't think Daleks and Cybermen count as Moffatisms because they were part of the show for long before he was. Mm, ah, but under his reign they're sort of without purpose, really. No, I mean, they were still in most... Yeah, they still pop up fairly regularly. Even. The Cybermen are just someone else's bitch and the Daleks sort of... There's no goal for them anymore. So like aside from the been setting. There. Yeah, but, uh, but in... <laughs> The in, 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 in that, in that first four bitch. years, four years, you sort of felt like the Dalek stories were happening in order, like in terms of their mission and where they were up to and stuff. Whereas now it's just like, why are there a bunch of them from different eras in different rooms? Why is this? What is this for? I don't get it. Um, so, like, it's always been in the classic series as well, then. Yeah, but the classic series didn't have classic series Daleks from other classic series stories to distract you with pretty from the lack of story. Remembrance did. I won't be happy again until the Daleks are covered in bloody Prozacs like the Destiny ones were. Destiny's fucking awful. It's dreadful. Um, <clears throat> I'm not excited for series 10 full stop. No, me either. I'll Bill, I'll serve the chips. This is the Professor. Sorry, are you are you trying to be School Reunion? Because School Reunion School Reunion and School Reunion is the greatest thing ever. So, screw you guys. Hmm. Konami is Konami, and Konami are the worst. I just realised where the phrasing of the school reunion sentence was, and I had to say it. Okay. I'm sorry. That's okay. Forgive me. Um, no, we're not looking forward and to... Thank God for me. To, uh, <laughs> we're not looking forward to Series 10. No. Um, I'm looking forward to Series... Whenever the, it gets good again. That'll be nice. That'll be a fun series. With many of the BBC's fantasy dramas being kind of bland, how do you think their adaptation of his Dark Materials will go whenever it airs? Oh, shit. I didn't realise um, they were working on that. I hope it's better than the film. Yeah. Oh, Christ, yeah. Let's yeah. see. <clears throat> is this where the budget for, like, Atlantis and Robin Hood and everything is going now, then? I they guess. don't have fucking budget, Chris. <laughs> That's very true. Um... Listen. Having been employed by the BBC many times, we can probably both confirm that they don't have any fucking money. Do you prep? <laughs> Finally. If they did, they're certainly not giving it to the people who work there. Controversial statement. Finally, Might not be true. Ian asks. It's true. Do you praise the living flesh supercomputer? <laughs> well, we have to, because otherwise it'll give us more homework. That's the plan. Yeah. Um, I, I shit you not. If, if, Stu, if Stu Bag falls... Living Flesh Supercomputer had been in class, regardless of context, it would instantly have been the best thing on TV this year. Everything needs a Living Flesh Supercomputer. Yeah. Who else does the maths? <laughs> um, but where do all the calculators go? <laughs> <laughs> Ta-ta and bye bye for now, Ian. P.S. Good luck with the Night Doctor Adventures, Chris. I see you're playing the long game. Badum tish and yeah, yeah, news on that soon, put it that way. To finish, we have Jacob once again with a lovely long email. Let's go. Dive in. I'm in the in. voice of Matthew Watson. Ahem. Ahem. <clears throat> Let's get this right. Um, hello, Chris and Matt. Before I start my email it's terrible. properly. terrible. <laughs> do, do it properly. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> hello, Chris and Matt. Hello. Before I start my email properly, I want to say that I am writing this email on Sunday, January the 8th, and I'm slightly ill and extremely tired, so for added amusement... Added amusement? Am I usually funny? I have no clue. I am writing it today. Okay. Um, well, by the time... a delirious state of mind. You are delirious, clearly. But by the time you read this email, Chris will have finished off his pants over, and I want to say to Chris, well done, I wish you could come to see it. I also want to say that both of you... But especially Chris Ooh. is a huge role model to me and inspiration to me, as I have no idea what I'm going to do in life, but working on children's TV is one of the main candidates... Oh, that's um, sweet. Yeah, uh, don't do it. it. It's don't a do trap. It. Um, 
It's like the second Death Star. I should be. And involved. only Billy D. Williams wearing another man's clothes will ever get you out of it. I shouldn't be a role model for anyone, and Chris should be rolled down a hill, um, <laughs> in a barrel, <laughs> or a wheel of cheese. Um, <laughs> oh my god, that's, last, like, that's like my new life goal. I want to be rolled down. Last week I said I had the strange urge to watch The Princess Bride and I want to say how good it is. Usually I can't stand romantic films but The Princess Bride keeps me entertained slash attention. Is this a kissing book? And I have an attention span of a three-year-old. I don't have words to describe how good it is. All I can say is it's inconceivable and my name is Inigo Montoya. You killed my father. Prepare to die. Um, It's not supposed to be a romantic film. It's a parody of romantic um, adventure stories. That's the, that's the point. I need to watch that um, again. I need it's to based watch that on again. it's based on a novel <clears throat> which does a similar things in the literary format as a parody of romantic adventure stories. It's not romantic; it's a parody. It's a satire. That's why you like it so much. Um, by the time this episode of the podcast comes out, the series of unfortunate events Netflix series will be out, and I can't wait. I'm so excited. I remember listening to the audiobooks in early 2011, and they quickly became one of my favorite book series. They are so ridiculously wonderful. Yeah, we're quite looking forward to it. They too. are. They are um, very fascinating distractions okay that will make sense to just you okay um <laughs> before I get on to Doctor Who questions I would like to say one of my highlights of last year was starting to send emails to you wonderful and wacky blogs and I'm glad you continue to support with my Polish Richard emails and I hope it's not extremely creepy and weird to consider you as friends even though I only speak to you through emails that sounded so cheesy it's not that creepy or weird just like don't stalk on Facebook don't stalk us and be creepy on Facebook and we'll be alright yeah. um <laughs> We'll be fine. Um, yeah, and and knock before you slide into our DMs. Yes, please. <laughs> please. Um, like, don't... Hello? I'm doing something! Don't just arrive on our doorsteps. Mom! Don't be weird. <laughs> Mom! No, it's knock first. Don't be weird and it won't be weird. There we go. That's how you do that. <laughs> um, now for Doctor Who questions. Have you watched every classic Doctor Who story? Nope. Um, I, I, let's rephrase that. Every classic one available to watch. No, no. I've still, um, I've still got more that I need to watch. I need to, pl- I need to fill some serious gaps in my collection. Um, why do we like Doctor Who so much? Because it's great. Next question. Possibility um, to go anywhere. Don't you think she looks tired? I look fucking tired. Um, <laughs> are you my mummy? Definitely not. Madam, what year is this? 2017. <laughs> <laughs> if you had to pick a doctor to travel with that wasn't your favourite doctor, which doctor would it be? Oh, that's a good one. Um... Because that immediately limits, like, one or two options. Uh, oh, God. I probably want to travel with... He's not my favourite, but I adore him. I want to travel with Pat. Mm. Second Doctor. Lovely, lovely, cuddly Uncle Space Hobo. That'd be fun. I want to travel with Action Man John Pertwee. <laughs> Come along, Matthew. Do you my let's, really... Let's travel. Oh, shit. The brakes are still my, my, Not allowed to leave. My really cool uncle with... Uh, frilly pants. Come, Matthew. Um, let's travel to the supply cabinet because I'm stuck on Earth. <laughs> if you had to pick an alternative... <laughs> Go get me a Bunsen burner, boy. If you had to pick an alternative knife, Doctor, who would it be? Personally, I think it should be Richard E. Grant. Well, it was. It was. Um, I'm I'm Rowan Atkinson. W- um, Christopher Eccleston. There, uh, no. Yeah. It's in- inconceivable. There is no I alternative can't knife replace doctor. him. There is no alternative knife, Doctor. Um, but Next then again, question. then again, Hugh Laurie. But, yeah. Then again... But that's less, less, less alternative Ninth Doctor, more just, oh, he'd be an interesting casting choice in the mid-2000s. Then again, Sean Bean. Um, he died in his first episode. Yeah. <laughs> if, you, if, if, if Doctor Who was created in the 1970s, do you think it would have brought on? Do you think it would have caught on? Um, yes, probably. but more because of an increase in science fiction programming that was happening in the 70s yeah I think but then I think that was also tied into the success of Doctor Who and Star Trek and things like that so I think, I think Star Trek would have been a big enough push for that yeah. for that environment to still exist but I know what you mean I think however there would be more American stuff than British which is why Doctor Who might still have thrived because it yeah. was so British um but at the same time, the reason why its appeal continued is because the seventies content, Tom and, and John specifically, um, is what made America sit up and go, "Oh, what's this?" Yeah, all the PBS repeats and stuff. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, maybe not. That's 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 something that's something to ask a Time Lord who can see into alternate realities rather than us two simple little, dear little, little fucking old little bastards. Top five favourite episodes <laughs> from Stephen's era, written by Stephen. 
Oh, top five. Yeah, let's make it. Let's, let's, let's pick two each that we like. The episodes that he wrote in season that he five. He wrote in oh oh shit, <laughs> and that's, that's it. it. I think there was five. <laughs> yeah, that's Hang it. On. Eleventh hour, beast below. Um, Big Bang, Pandora opens, and I'm sure there's another. A time of angels and flesh and stone. That's six. So yeah, there you go. So them apart from beast below, because I didn't rate beast below that much. Um. I like Day of the Doctor. There are, there's problems, but it is an enjoyable episode. Day of the Doctor's okay. It's um, all right. I like Night of the Doctor, because he's given eight minutes, so he can't go too off the rails. I like Night of the Doctor because he's got Paul McGann in it. Eleventh uh, Hour is perfect, uh, as far as I'm concerned. Eleventh Hour is amazing. Um, it's one of my favourite... That and Spearhead are probably my favourite post-regeneration stories. Um, Pandora Corrupts and Big Bang. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Um, Night of the Doctor. It does count. Day of the Doctor, 11th Hour, Pandora Opens, Big Bang. There you go. Boom! Pandora Opens, Big Bang, 11th Hour, Time of Angels, Flesh and Stone. Ooh. Good picks. <laughs> Good dirty picks. Good dirty dick picks. Talk about dirty picks. What's oh, no, we've not been sent a dick pic. <laughs> What's so appealing to you about the Doctor Who <laughs> Unitard? Um, if you mean, like sort of the expanded franchise that they seemingly are trying to put together. Not much. Um, but if you mean, like, just the world, the fictional world Doctor Who lives in, I guess... I don't know. Just that kind of slight British flavour to it. Like, the fact that yeah. it, it stands out because there's not really many sci-fi shows that own their Britishness. Um, and wear it on the sleeve so proudly. And that's not us going like, you know, he's very British. I mean, just like, you know, it's Englishman and the police box. It's all sort of, you wouldn't get another country producing that kind of thing. No. And it's and it, standing the test of time. And they tried and it didn't work. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think Endless Possibilities is what attracts me about Doctor Who. Um, the wider expanded universe, as with this old Star Wars expanded universe, is mostly garbage. So I just kind of ignore it. Um <laughs> Books aren't bad. Books tend to be quite good. Some of the books are good. Some of the books are good. Some of the books are good. You don't want to sell me death sticks. I don't want to sell you any death sticks. You want to go home and rethink your life. I do want to go home and rethink my life. Um, <laughs> lots of love, Jacob. Thank you, Jacob. Always good to hear from you. P.S. Due to Chris returning to Manchester, I photoshopped some pictures and he sent us some pictures that we can ogle. Oh, my Lord. It's photoshops. Oh, thank God. Yeah, they're not like dick pics. Oh, thank Christ. Although they have pictures of dicks. Let's have a quickie peek. We, 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 should, post some, we should get some of these posted on the Tumblr. It's your face. The return it's of Chris face. Johnson. That's horrifying. Oh, no. Oh, God. We have Funko Pops now. Oh, they're pretty cool. They're really cool. That's quite sweet. You've got a sweet little beard rocking yeah, on your Funko Pop. Rocking. Sadly, out of date, I've got a new beard, but you've not seen it yet because I'm in hiding. Um, that's all our emails for this week, Chris. Oh, no, it isn't. Yes, Sorry, I'm still in punter mode. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> no, no, it's over now, Chris. You can stop. Oh, you God. can stop now. Oh, God, no. They won't hurt you again. I need to throw sweets at children. They won't hurt you again. And not in a sinister way. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, You're actually you massaging my collarbone into a, a pull. I'm just going to pace. I'm just going to pull your throat a out. Fine a fine pace. A fine pace. Fine pace. I judge the quality of this pace to be fine. <laughs> Um, and with that <laughs> let us all say a few words dear James Franco who art in the title <laughs> stanky be thy name don't turn this into the fat man and Batman credit no. your visage shite no don't do it don't a don't smell do it. you might carry here on earth as in heaven oh no give us this day our daily flannel so we might hand it to you in an attempt to get you to wash <laughs> And please stop hanging out with Danny McBride. Start the music, please. Start Nothing the music. you all produce please start the is music. ever worth it. For the power, the glory, and the lack of charisma, yet strange string of high profile jobs are yours. Thank you for listening to Big Damn Cast. Get us at bigdamcontact.gmail.com. At Big Damn Cast on Twitter. Uh, I've been Big Damn Matthew. Oh, this yeah. one's gone crazy. Send help, please. Breakers.